Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm sure you've noticed if you follow me on Instagram. I'm blonde now. And it's been an interesting um, journey to my blonde head. Um, there is kind of a story behind it, which is kind of sad, but um, I wanted to share it with you because I've learned a lot over the last uh, couple of months about, you know, just life in general. Um, so this is how the blonde came about. Um, <laughs> sadly, um, last month we had an unexpected death in the family. Um, and it, it was, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It was probably like one of the worst situations we have ever found ourselves in ever. Um, it was unexpected, it was hard, and it, it, it really just kind of change, I don't even know if change is the right word, but it just affects you on like a cellular, cellular level. And my husband and I were just, you know, we're in this, you know, you're in that process of grieving while you're trying to make funeral arrangements and you're just trying to like make all of it happen and it's, it's difficult and it's hard and you realize that when things like that happen, when deaths like that happen that are very unexpected and you don't, you don't know what to do, it, ch it changes your perspective of life. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details about who the person was or what happened only because I, you know, didn't get permission to talk about it from my husband who I feel like would definitely need to kind of be okay with me sharing the, 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 ju the juice of it. Juice of it? That sounds horrible, but that's not what I mean. Anyway, so... With everything that had happened, it just really got me to thinking. I had been, you know, doing highlights for, I don't know, I had like three sessions of highlights at Graham Webb Academy, which I still really love and I would definitely will go back to probably more to like get my hair cut. But, um, so, but my thought process was this. Life is too short not to do what it is that you really want. And so I had been talking about going all blonde for like a year before I started doing highlights. And when I went when I went to the hair school, they were really, you know, very diplomatic about it and they were like, "Well, you know, blonde is a process. You probably want to, you know, just do lots of highlights and until you get to the blonde that you want." And um I got impatient because I thought, "You know what? I really do want to see how this goes. I want to be blonde. I want to just see if I like it, see how my, see if it goes with my personality. And I'm not going to lie. The process was daunting <laughs> because, um, my husband and I did it together. It was like, you know, team effort. Um, and I was really, really careful about the whole thing. I doused my whole hair in coconut oil before we even put bleach on it. Um, so I put the coconut oil on and then my husband was in charge of doing the back of my hair and he did a really good job. He did a really good job. There's just one little section that he missed, but it's totally fine. Totally fine. It's completely coverable. Nobody really notices it. It's fine. Not, not an issue. Um, and then I made the mistake that I didn't know you could do this because my roots were so dark. I thought, well, I need to bleach those first and then do the ends because the ends are a lot lighter and I don't want the um I don't want the them to be as damaged. That's a mistake. If you ever color your hair and you're bleaching your hair and you have about I had about 2 inches of dark root that I wanted to get done first, don't do that. Um don't color your roots first when you are first doing the bleach because it will take it honestly and I was really surprised by that. It took less time for my roots to bleach out than it did for, you can still tell because I still have the darker pieces, the like more redder pieces in here. That is three processes of bleach. So don't make that same mistake. I honestly was trying to do only like two processes of bleach 
because I really wanted to get as light as I could. And I got to that really light, light, light yellow color that I really wanted. And then after the third session of bleach, I was like, that's it. I, I have to tone it. I can't bleach it anymore. I can't do any more damage to it. We'll just, you know, we'll deal with it. We'll do what we have to do. And then we'll, we'll go back and do it again. So, um, that's what happened. And so now we're about, oh gosh, like maybe two, three weeks into the being blonde. And I love it. I love it. I'm really glad that we did it. And I'm really glad that I was able to kind of do it with my, I mean, I'm not kind of, I am glad that my husband helped me with it because I don't necessarily think I would have been able to do it otherwise. But he was real gung ho about it. He was real excited about it. And we just needed, um, we definitely needed a project to do together. And I was amazed by how just the simple thing, the simplest thing of coloring your hair can be something that just changes your whole perspective on things. But this is, this is what it really did. It made me realize that, you know, life, life is too short not to do what you want to do. So if you want to color your hair blonde, go blonde, redhead, brunette, you know, Sally's Beauty Supply, who does not sponsor my channel, but who I am a great fan of, has a lot of really awesome products, really wonderfully priced. I think I went blonde for maybe, maybe under 50 bucks. I had to go back and get more bleach, but even the bleach packets were like $5. Where's they fight? This one might've been $3.99. I don't know. It was under $5 for the bleach packet. And then, you know, you get the developers and they were on sale and they're all really reasonably priced. And if you get the bigger ones, it's probably better because I got the smaller ones. I realized I probably shouldn't have done that, but, um, but I got the ion, the developers I got, I got a 20 and a 30. Why did I get a 20? I got a 20 for the, um, toner and I got a 30 for the bleach and um, I got the Ion Sensitive Scalp, which honestly really helped, really helped out a lot. And then um, I used Wella T35, I think. I think it was T35, which was a light blonde. It wasn't the platinum, which I don't know, I'm kind of thinking I want to go platinum next, but I'm not sure. I think we're going to do another round of just the T35 and like... I don't know, according to my roots, probably like another couple of weeks. So I probably have like another two weeks before I have to do any, uh, any, uh, root, root cover up or anything like that. But that's where we are with that. So I'm just saying, live the life that you want to live. Go blonde or not. Take care of yourself spiritually, emotionally, physically. Go to the doctor. Find out what's ailing you. And if you have any fears of doctors or needles or medications, I will pray for you. I don't necessarily know how to help you with that because those are phobias that I don't really quite understand. Like I have a phobia of touching raw chicken, which I know a lot of people don't understand that, but not just raw chicken, just raw meat in general. Like if you ever see me cooking and I cook, I cook, you know, a good majority of all of our meals. I never touch raw meat. I go to the store, I buy gloves. I buy the gloves so I don't have to touch raw, raw meat of any kind. I don't know why it freaks me out. It just always has. Even when I was a child and I would make like, I remember being 16 years old and like making hamburgers for the family. And I'm like making, like just forming the patties. And I'm like, oh, just creeps me out, which is really unfortunate. But I've, I've realized how bad it's gotten because I can't watch cooking shows now and watch the chefs touch raw meat. I'm like, oh, oh, it just, ugh, it, bleh, I don't like it. it. Creeps me out. Anyway, back to the point that I was trying to make. If you have phobias about the doctor, definitely go with a friend. Find a comfort, find a comfort, a comfort to take with you even if it's like a teddy bear and you're like a 45 year old man bring that teddy bear I'm just talking about live your life on your terms because we are only here for a short time 
My grandmother lived to be 90 years old, and when I look back at that, that is a nice long life. That's 90 years. She was born in 1926 and died in 2016. 17? Oh, that's terrible. I don't remember. 17. Crap. Yeah, 17. So, right? Oh my god, now I feel terrible. I cannot remember. It was 17 because she died, like, I think two weeks shy of her 91st birthday. That's what it was. Sorry, math is not my friend sometimes. Anyway, point is, is that my grandma had a nice long life, but in the span of a lifetime, and you look back on those 90 years, she probably... I know she doesn't regret anything, but I'm sure there are other things that she would have liked to have done, but but when you're 50 and you die unexpectedly, that challenges everything that you know about life to all of the loved ones that you've left behind. It makes no sense. The only thing that I know that I can do to honor this memory is to live the life that I want on my terms and how I want to live it. And so that is what I want everybody else to do. Okay, I'm gonna go before I lose it. And I already did my makeup and I don't wanna have to do it again. And I, I don't, don't know if that sounds glib, but I'm just trying to get through this without crying. So, all right, I hope everybody has a good day. Peace out, love yourselves, love each other. Please forgive the messiness of my bed behind me. I'm just, I'm a hot mess today, all right. Peace out. Love you guys. Bye.